Welcome to my basement. Note the pink walls. Anyways guys, hope you're doing well. This is my Inventables X-Carve. I'm working on doing a bunch of videos on actually upgrading this, but one thing I really want to kind of open with as far as a video about the X-Carve was talking about easel. There was two reasons that I went with the X-Carve over anything else. The first one was easel and the fact that I could just dive into it and I messed around with it a little bit before actually ordering the machine and instantly I was hooked and there was lots of things that I could do in it, but there's a lot of things that I didn't understand and I, I've learned over the past two years a couple tricks that I wanna show you. Uh, bit, I guess a bit of a tutorial uh, as well on some of the features that are built in, uh, but some of the tricks that I've learned as well. So the second thing and the second reason why this was the machine that I bought over anything else was just the amount of content that there is out there uh, from other creators that uh, talk about how the machine works, what you can do with the machine, and just there's just so much. And there's lots of rabbit trails that uh, you can go on with this. Uh, in fact, the rabbit trail that this thing originally led me on was into the YouTube world. And here we are two years later, and I'm trying to produce my own content so anyways so shout out to inventables for building a fun machine here are four tips that i wish i knew on the first couple days or the first little while of owning my x-scarf hope you enjoy So it was a little while after I got the X-Carve that they came out with the line tool. And the line tool gives you the ability to draw straight and curved lines. This right here is an example of one of the projects I worked on a while ago. And this is a chair that I actually built. And this is the side profile of the chair. So I cut this out of walnut plywood and glued a couple of them together and made the center of this chair. And you can actually check this out if you want to see pictures of it uh, over on my Instagram. Let's actually look at a use case where uh, you might want to build something that uh, has straight and curved lines. And, and let's use the, the push stick as an example. So I'm going to use the grid. And uh, as you can see, my line turned red, which means that I'm 90 degrees to the workpiece. And I'm just going to draw out roughly what I think would be a good shape for a push stick. Now, this looks kind of boring and doesn't look very uh, ergonomic. <laughs> so what we'll do is I'm just going to double click on my object and I'm going to select this dot for instance and I'm just going to switch this to a curve and we're just going to go through and change a bunch of these to curves just so we can get a more eased profile. And I'm already, I'm, I'm preferring the shape of this. So this looks more like what a push stick or you, you would imagine a push stick to look like. Now, if you're looking to make this maybe a little bit more dramatic, maybe a little bit more styled, uh, of course, you have the ability to change your curves. You want a little bit more dramatic of a curve or less dramatic of a curve, you can angle that. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's line tool. <laughs> So I do consider this a bit of an easel hack. A while ago I was working on a cutting board and I wanted to put a uh, juice trough in the cutting board and I thought let's see what I can do with an easel and uh, let the X-Carve do all the hard work. You have lots of bits that you can choose from with an easel, uh, but you really only have the ability, uh, other than to change the width of course, to use a straight bit or a V bit, V carving bit. In this case, uh, I wanted this to ha have a round profile, so what I actually did was I took a round nose bit and I put that in the, uh, the router on my, uh, on my X-Carve to make sure that these edges were rounded and there's a little bit less drastic of a, uh, of, a, of a juice groove. To set this up, 
what I did was I drew my square just using the square tool to be within uh, the parameters of my material. The material size I set to was the exact size of the cutting board. And then I just set up the cut path to be on the outline of the object. That way it would use the round over bit right in the middle of where I wanted it to cut. Whenever you're dropping uh, an object onto material, you wanna make sure you're also centered. So it's super important to make sure that you get your material correct. Uh, that way when you're doing your cut path, it, it lands right where it needs to. In this case, I wanna make sure this as well is centered. So I'm just gonna go edit and go to my center to material. And that's gonna put it perfectly in the middle of where I need it to be. And I'm set up to go. favorite sets of tools with an easel uh, for sure is the shape tools and the menu that you get under your shape tools. This object right here, this is just a y-axis upgrade that I'm looking to do to my X-Carve. I want to increase the height. So this is an image that I found online that uh, I basically moved into easel and we're going to manipulate this a little bit so it fits onto our workpiece. The aluminum that I'm using for this, the way I need to mount it, uh, is not in line with how the piece is. So I just need to change the plane, I need to change the alignment of my piece. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire object, I'm going to click on my shape menu, and I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees. As you can see now, it's moved the plane of the object and I'm now 90 degrees the same plane as my workpiece, even though now I'm not on it. So <laughs> we're just going to select the workpiece and I'm going to position it on zero, zero. That way I know for sure it's in line with my material and we can go from there. For this design, I need to have something that's a little bit wider than two inches, which is not going to happen. Uh, it's easier for me to change the object than it is going to be to go get more material. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the outside object and I'm going to change my width of this object to something that I know is going to fit on my two inch piece of material. And of course that totally messes up my second uh, mounting hole at the bottom. So we're just going to change this as well so it's aligned along the y-axis at the right height. So now I'm still in line with my other drilling hole or my other mounting hole, sorry, uh, but I am now within uh, the boundaries of what my material will be. <laughs> surprised when I started working with these how much I could actually design. There were some more complicated uh, designs that I needed to work on in other programs. Easel gives you a really simple way to import a file type called SVG. Now, if you're familiar with things like Adobe Illustrator, uh, an SVG file shouldn't be anything that uh, is uncommon to you. For me, at that point, it definitely was. So. After doing some research, I realized that one tool I had access to that I, I understood was Google SketchUp. And Google SketchUp has the ability to add a plugin, uh, which is designed by Flight of Designs, to export SVG files. And this works incredibly well uh, when interacting with Easel. Just to give you an example, this is actually a table saw tapering jig that I'm working on. And we're going to export this as an SVG and then set it up in Easel to uh, do our cut paths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire object. I'm going to click SVG. I, out of habit, always change this to inches. Not that it matters for how we're using it, but uh, I always do. Then we're simply just going to save this and move into easel. So I have my material size set up. 
and I'm just going to import the SVG that I created. And because this is a 2D object, you'll notice that all my depths are basically set to cut all the way through, which not, isn't necessarily how I want them to uh, cut. So, uh, for instance, on the larger piece, which would be the deck, I am going to put carriage bolts, and I want the heads of the carriage bolts to be inset, about a quarter of an inch, and I want those to be not an outline, but I want those to be filled. And you'll notice when I did that, where my slots will eventually be, uh, those pieces disappeared. Uh, all you want to do is right click, and we're just going to send back, and that brings those two forward. And then we'll just click on the objects, and we're actually going to do a fill, because we want those to cut all the way through. We're going to do the same on the top. Easel gives us a great 3D preview. How's the saying go? Whatever it takes to get the shot. Hopefully that helped. If there's stuff that you guys have learned that you maybe want to share, uh, let's talk about that in the comments below. I'd love to get some feedback on maybe some things that you're doing that maybe I'm missing out on. I, I'm probably missing out on a lot of stuff. Uh, like I said before, I'm working on a video series where I'm actually going to upgrade this machine. Uh, I'm going to make this, the, the standard X-Carve is a thousand millimeter by a thousand millimeter. I actually have the rails to make this a thousand millimeter by 1800 millimeter. So I'll be working on that over the next little while. So stay tuned for videos about that. If you like videos and contents like this, give me a thumbs up, help me out. I'm just getting started. So uh, a, a sacrificial subscription would be greatly appreciated and yeah we'll see you guys out there Ooh.